Hey everyone, uh, so welcome back to episode 2 of the Sunday Inspiration. Uh, today I'll be chatting to Jamie McGarry. Uh, he is aspiring to be a bodybuilder, so he's already trained for a bodybuilding competition. But because of um, COVID, he wasn't able to keep going with it. So um, yeah, here he is now, he'll just tell you himself. <laughs> All right, just while he's waiting to join, um, he was supposed to do a bodybuilding competition and then decided to do a photo shoot instead. Here he is. Okay. <laughs> Very nice things. Good. How are you, Jamie? Grand, grand, grand. That's good. That's good. Um, so just I was in the middle of doing an introduction, but you joined quick, oh, <laughs> very quick. My bad. So, no, that's fine. Uh, so why don't you just introduce yourself instead? You'll do a better job than, than me. Like <laughs> Introduce myself. Yeah, just for people who don't know who you are. <laughs> I suppose I'm 23. I'm um, an online coach, personal trainer. I did the NCF with you for four years. Uh, currently in an off season, getting ready to do um, a competition next September, which was cancelled last year. So because of COVID, so now I'm getting ready again to do another competition. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when you were, when you decided to do bodybuilding, did Doing the Mr. Ireland help in any way, or is it completely different? Um, actually, it, it helped a little bit because mm. um, even though that was like a pageant type thing, there was a section in it where you had to do like a swimsuit kind of wear. So I was obviously going on a stage in a pair of shorts, so I wanted to be in the best shape possible for that. But then when I was actually walking on the stage, I had to learn how to be confident to do that as well. So... Um, yeah, I suppose it helps a little bit. Like so, like when I do one stage, it'll obviously be different, but it'll feel a little bit familiar as well. Yeah. And was there anything in particular you had to learn when you were doing the Mister Ireland? So you know, there's poses in in bodybuilding, like. Yeah, yeah, no, th there was no, there was no poses in that. It was literally just like walk tall or whatever. Um, <laughs> So, no, no posing at all for Mr. Ireland, really. He was just kind of walk up and just stand in front of the judges and move okay. across the edge. So it wasn't that big of a deal, really. Not bad. Uh, how many years ago was that? That was 2018. So, yeah. Three years. And what yeah. made you then decide to go into bodybuilding? Um, I suppose it was the beginning of September last year. And it was just the people I was hanging around with in work. They were all like mad into bodybuilding and doing prep and all that. And mm. I was getting more interested and I was learning a lot more about fitness and nutrition and sticking to a diet as I was hanging around with them. And I just got really interested and I, I thought, um, I, I just decided I'll go ahead and go do the prep for it and uh, see how it goes. I just wanted to do it once. I want to do, my goal is just to do one natural competition Mm. Um, and just show what you can do with the body naturally without any performance enhancement drugs and do a drug tested competition and kind of make a point that way um, and then see where it goes from there like if that answers yeah. your question oh yeah no it does it does um, you trained for it last year and mm. I was in college with you while you were training for it like mm -hmm. your food was like there was no sauce, there was no nothing. Like, did mm. that ever get to you at all, that you couldn't just have whatever you wanted to have? You had to stick to rice and turkey and all of that, like? It's actually still like that now, most of the time. <laughs> um, and it, it doesn't really faze me, to be honest. It's it just all comes down to discipline. Like, um, I'm just eating kind of the same bland foods day in, day out. It's like I've no taste at this stage. But, um, but then when I do get a cheat meal every now and then, I, I really enjoy it a lot more because... I don't have it as often, do you know? Mm. So, and what's your go-to cheat meal? Well, uh, probably volcano wings and a good Indian dish. <laughs> um, so before bodybuilding and before the Mr. Ireland, you got into, you were in martial arts mm -hmm. for a long time. You, that's yeah. actually when I first met you, you were like huge into martial arts. You were doing kickboxing at the time. Yeah. Are you still into that, or have you kind of walked away from it a little bit just to focus uh, on bodybuilding? Yeah, <laughs> good question. So 
I I had to really think about that. So I was kind of dipping in and out of it in the last year. However, in the last six months, I focused on boxing more because um, I just wanted to improve my hands and I was actually really enjoying boxing. But um, then just from sparring a lot, like I've, I've gotten a lot of head injuries from competing and sparring really. So I kind of had to decide, you know, like if I do bodybuilding, it's actually going to be less... Um, health threatening in the long run really so like I don't get any kind of I don't know brain problems or anything by the time I'm 50 so I decided um, to hang up the gloves and just pursue this like and I might even pursue someone else after I'm finished with bodybuilding you know so yeah kind of that's kind of um, I'll never compete again in martial arts at the moment I might train every now and then so yeah yeah I'm in the same boat I won't compete again in, in taekwondo uh yeah got too many kicks into the head back like legs like it's just it is it's a lot more um and people when you say oh you do martial arts people don't think it's as injury prone as you say like they don't take it seriously they go like oh yeah yeah okay whatever but um would you say that injuries with martial arts are way way worse than say bodybuilding injuries because you can pull muscles easy if you oh yeah, 100%, yeah. 100% like if um i think like if you pull your shoulder or something you can go to physio and do your rehab or whatever and it'll be fine within a couple of weeks or so and you're back to normal if, if you look after it properly that is but like i did a lot of heavy sparring and i had a lot of concussions throughout the years and a concussion like can last for the, the side effects that can last for a couple of weeks like you know and um your brain also doesn't really heal right in the long run. So, yeah, I'd say that those injuries are worse. Um, so back to, actually, what, before I move on to that question, what made you get into martial arts? So I know the answer, and I think it's quite interesting. So Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So as I was growing up, primary school, secondary school, I tried every single team sport. Um, I wasn't great at them. I was actually all right at hurling, believe it or not. I was quite when I was um like 12 and 13 but um all the other sports I just I didn't enjoy them and I really just I don't know didn't want to keep going with them then I was kind of getting a bit bullied in first and second year secondary school by the rugby players who were all a lot bigger than me so um I decided then I said all right I want to learn some sort of self-defense so I started kickboxing in the beginning and did a bit of Aikido and I think it was, it was some form of karate, I can't remember the name of it, but I did a bunch of other ones. And then it all kicked off from there and I became mad into martial arts and then went on to do MMA, Muay Thai, boxing and a bit of jiu-jitsu as well. And when you were getting bullied, like what would they bully you for? Oh, my size anyway, because I was, I was um, extremely underweight. So I'd always get comments about how skinny I was and I would have got um, physically bullied as well by them. And um, like there was a group of lads I hung around with, um, if they see this actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> Look at you so, now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there was a group of lads I hung around with and like I was the smallest in that group and I was one who was picked on as well. So I obviously had to stop hanging around with those guys, you know, and find new friends. Mm. And have they ever tried to contact you since now that you, like, you know, you're in amazing shape, like now, um, have they ever seen you since and have they ever said anything since or um to be honest there was a couple of nights out where i would have seen them like one or two of them like and they they would have had drink in them and they probably probably would have just said oh yeah do you know fair play to you only got in shape whatever so like there was that but yeah oh. so then you decided to go into martial arts then we've already spoken about you got into um bodybuilding mm -hmm. but what was it like when you were training so hard for one year was it one year i suppose like i've i've been doing weights now for like six or seven years like i've always been doing weights even when i was in martial arts but like i've decided to knuckle down and go 100 percent with all the weightlifting and uh hypertrophy training in like the last um over a year and a half now at this stage i'd say mm. and um like when you're doing 
when you were doing all that work because it's it's quite strenuous uh how much work you had to do between nutrition and training and then you mm. were studying you were in your final year of college as well and then be told that yeah it's cancelled what was your first thought oh god i i i nearly cried to be honest with you i remember like jesus cuz every single day leading up to that i was literally thinking talking everything i was doing like i was that competition was on my mind the whole time. Then I was told it was cancelled, so after, I was just upset, really. Like, um, so then I went and got a few beers. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, then I just kind of had a, had a chat with my coach at the time, and he said, look, you're still young. He said, don't get too upset about it. He goes, you'll be back next year, and you'll be better than ever. And uh, just it's now time to make improvements while I'm waiting for another competition to be cancelled, to be not cancelled, but announced. <laughs> Hopefully not another one's cancelled. <laughs> it's actually kind of looking like that at the minute. <laughs> really? Well, not looking like it's um, cancelled, but like it's going to be a while before gyms open up, so we'll have to see. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you decided to make it a positive thing because you were in such great shape, and it would be a pity just to get in this great shape and then be like, oh, forget about it. You decided to do a photo shoot. Mm. So... What was the training like for that? Did you have to drop weight and like eat certain foods yeah. again, or yeah? I I literally I treated that photo shoot like stepping on stage for a bodybuilding competition. I didn't want to just do a photo shoot and have a pure Photoshop photo of abs, or whatever. I wanted to actually be in shape. Like I can show a photo of the morning beforehand, taken raw on my camera compared to the the photo shoot one and obviously like the photo shoot photo will be a bit better but um no the training was exactly like getting ready for a bodybuilding competition like i did the whole prep process i did cardio every single day of the week i did my weights training i was cutting back my food i went from 82 and a half kg all the way down to 70 kg for that shoot i had to do a water cut and everything so yeah um and that'll also prepare me for doing a bodybuilding pre uh, prep in future as well so when I get that lean again, I'll kind of be like, all right, so I've been here before, so now I know how to do it again, but maybe better this time. Mm. I heard, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but when you're doing a photo shoot, I heard that before the photo shoot, shoot you have to eat a lot of sugar. Is that true? Mm, no, well. No. No, like you carve up, I suppose. Like, not, not, not loads. Like, I had a bag of jellies during the photo shoot and... Mm. I'd have maybe one or two throughout the shoot, if that made sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, I heard so, yeah. it kind of brought your muscles out a bit more or something, your veins or something like that. Yeah, it you can help uh, so get the pump. So, yeah. Hmm. So, like, you deplete your body down to nothing. Hmm. So, you're on only, like, I was only eating 50 grams of carbs every day before the shoot. Then the night beforehand, I had a burger to carb up. And then I had, like, some rice cakes and jam the morning before the shoot. So, you basically just sh shrivel your body down to like no carbs and then you fill a lot of carbs into it the day beforehand and it just all the muscles puff out like so that's uh that's essentially what's done on a bodybuilding show as well hmm. so just before i move on completely to social media um what was or what is now actually your day-to-day -day training while preparing for this bodybuilding competition oh so with uh, home workouts <laughs> um, in the first lockdown I got some 30 kg dumbbells which are actually they're still a bit light but I'm making the best of them so um, I'm just doing a lot of uh, full body splits doing upper lower switching and have a spin bike at home um, just to keep you know tipping away at it so a lot of resistance band and dumbbell work really so just making the best of what I can at the moment so like like the body will respond to stimulus regardless, so it's better than doing, than doing nothing. Like, you know, so I'm just gonna have to try to maintain what I have until the gyms reopen, and then back mm. into the swing. Um. So, actually, what's your nutrition? So what's your what's your nutrition? Just one day of nutrition. What would you have? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. Oh God. Um. So this is a big list. Um. I'm being coached by my cousin at the moment. So. I'm currently on his diet plan, so I'm eating four... He actually just joined as well, so... All oh, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm eating almost 4,000 calories a day now at the moment, so I'm having, like, um, 
a couple of wheat bits, three eggs. Um, what else am I having? Oh God, he'll kill me. <laughs> um, pancakes. Then for lunch it's like bagels, turkey burgers, and for dinner it's uh, green beans, potatoes, chicken breast. Then there's also a bowl of oats and peanut butter. Um, what else? <laughs> There's rice cakes and peanut butter as well. And I think there's a couple of other things. That's all I can think of for now. But it's mm. almost 4,000 calories every day at the moment. So, yeah, I'm actually enjoying all the food, to be honest. So moving on now, because obviously you're very committed, like you're a very committed person. And um, you decided to also get into social media. So, you know, you, you've been on Instagram quite a while but you decided to get into um, YouTube as well. And you're, you're doing like really good. Like you're not just with your phone and five minutes of you just talking about your day. You're actually putting serious effort into it. So like what made you think, oh, um, yeah, I'm going to get into YouTube? Oh, thank you. Um, it could be better, actually. Um, I, I don't know. I get these mad ideas. Like, like the time I decided to do that, I'm going to go ahead and compete as well. I was literally just driving in the car one day and just it came out of nowhere into my head. I said, do you know what, I'll actually just go ahead and do it. Like like one morning in the first lockdown, I was thinking, I was like, I was just brushing my teeth and then I just had this idea. I said, I'll just do YouTube. So I said, like, you know, I, I was kind of comfortable enough speaking to a camera at that stage because I was doing those Snapchat um, stories. I had like a private story just for people who wanted to see fitness stuff. And I was going on a lot of rants and uh, sharing my knowledge and stuff. And people were kind of enjoying that. And after a couple of months of doing that, I was kind of like, you know what, it's, it's the same thing as speaking to a camera to a bunch of people um, on YouTube. So I thought I could make some good content with that. So, yeah. And what's your favorite video you've done so far? Oh, definitely the last video. I had a great crack in that with the uh, Marine. He was brilliant. Mm, it was very good. Um, what was the, how did you organize that? How did I organize it? Um, like, I know him about a year now. He was training at my gym, and, like, obviously I was working there and training there, so I'd see him going around, and I saw a U.S. Marine's cap on him, and one day we just kind of got talking, and I asked him, was he from the States? And then he went on telling me that he was in the Marines, so, so we actually became very good friends. Like, we, we met up for, um, uh, and we met on walks in the first lockdown, like, passing each other, and then, he was also in the same building as us. He was in the sports science building. So I'd actually see him in the mornings um, before a lecture and I'd talk to him for a while. So we'd get on great. So then um, I was seeing these videos on YouTube about people doing like a military fitness test. So I just said like, I said, I know an actual like guy who was in the Marines for 25 years and has seen a lot of shit as well. Um, so I said, why not get him to do the test? Like as in get, put me through it. You know, I thought it'd be a great idea and I thought people would enjoy it. Mm. What was the hardest part of the test? Oh, God, definitely lugging around Kevin. At the end of the <laughs> I knew like, you were going to say that. <laughs> oh, man, that, that took so much out of me. Because um, he said, like, I was told that someone has, if you're carrying someone, they have to be within 5 kg of your weight. So I'm about 77, 78 kg now and Kevin was 90. Uh, at the time of that video so I was kind of like oh no he'll be grand I was like oh, fucking oh I nearly died <laughs> and did you still get the time done was there a time I couldn't remember if there was a timer on that or not um, for that one I just scraped it I just got it in time mm. I think oh not bad uh, so you're on TikTok now as well oh uh, trying <laughs> <laughs> and what's the reason for going on to TikTok is it just for fun or is it to boost your uh, following on all networks yeah, I, I think um, it's actually very easy to kind of uh, get a big following on TikTok from what I was told and from seeing how it works. Like you can get a lot of views and a lot of followers very quick. So I think if I um, if I keep putting content on that, it might actually promote my YouTube and Instagram. Mm. So, yeah. Not bad. And now Instagram, you've been on it for a while, but in the last year, your followers have really went up a lot. Mm. I think because I think last year you were on about a thousand followers, a thousand something, and then this year you've like flew up to about two thousand. Um, is that true? Putting in 
effort on your half or do you think it's to do with the bodybuilding? Um, a bit of both. Like I kind of put myself out there as an online coach um, in the middle of the first lockdown. Then I was also, I started putting out like, I know more informative content. Like I, I made like a schedule for myself and I said like, I'll put out um, a big informative text kind of post like so I can share knowledge with people and you know, um, just give out stuff for free really and I think people kind of share that around or whatever. But uh, yeah, I think the bodybuilding also helps with it as well. Yeah, just showing people how committed you are and stuff and you're trying mm -hmm. to promote fitness as well would like help you a lot. Yeah, I'm just, I was trying to kind of improve my content, you know, like getting better videos and photos and stuff. And I think that also helps, like, you know, mm. and people are kind of learning a bit more about me as well. Just yeah. trying to give people some interesting to see and follow along with. So um, the last thing that, well, the last topic I want to talk about is you have another page as well called Primed Health. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to just talk about that for for anyone who's watching just so people know what it is um i actually haven't um promoted that or put it out on anything yet um oh, sorry. No, no no sorry <laughs> sorry sorry no no until the time is right but um mm. i just basically i just want that page to be just purely like um i don't know for people to go on for motivation or if they want online coaching i don't want any photos of myself on that page i just want people to go on it and kind of see like um, maybe some transformation photo from a client or maybe like read some quote or like some informative piece of information and you know help kind of motivate and inspire people if that makes mm. sense mm. And, and maybe in the long run um start doing other things with it like you know so yeah mm. um so the one and just one of the very last things now just before i log off um what would your advice be for anyone who a wants to get into the fitness industry and B people that are too afraid to ask for help in terms of reaching their fitness goal. Okay, when you say get into the fitness industry, do you mean like actually start training or become like a trainer themselves? Become a trainer themselves. Whether classes or a personal trainer, strength conditioning, anything like. Okay. Um so for that I suppose like make sure like it's it's your actual passion. Like don't I wouldn't say go half into it because of uh, there's actually a lot of people now at the moment who are kind of like they're doing it as a, a kind of side job um so they're not like fully invested in it so like if you are if you do want to become a trainer or something i think it should really be your passion and it should be a career you want to pursue for the long run rather than being like kind of a side hustle kind of thing you know um because it it might work out well for them or their clients because like if you have clients and that's like a side hustle you're not going to give them 100 percent, like you know um just from what i see um, what was the other question, sorry, after that? Um, the other question was people that are that need help or want help with uh, fitness, whether it be reaching a certain fitness goal or losing weight, but they're too afraid mm. to actually ask for help, so they're too afraid to go to a, a personal trainer. Um, if too afraid to go to a PT, um, I'd say like start like doing your research on YouTube, Google, like see what you can learn, expand your knowledge as much as possible, read some... Um, studies even like um you know become more aware of what you're doing um like also if you have any friends um who might have started beforehand or want to start with you it would be great like to start together like when i started the gym i was kind of with a group of two or three other people and that made me a lot more comfortable with it over time like so if we we're making any mistakes we're all making them together so we all look like asses together you know rather than just going and making a ask of yourself on your own you know so it's a lot better if you're with a group <laughs> so yeah um one thing i notice as well <laughs> is people are too afraid to go to the gym because they're afraid people will be looking at them yeah. but in reality nobody actually looks at you <laughs> yeah. they're too busy focusing on themselves you know yeah and their own that thing as well yeah i've had people say that to me as well like like my mother actually um was too afraid to start going to the gym last year. And she said, oh, well, if everyone's looking at me, and I said, they actually don't give a shit about you. Everyone's just focusing on themselves, like, you know. Mm. So, All yeah. right. Um, is there anything else you want to say about your own uh, personal training, if you want to promote yourself there? Uh, yeah, just um, if you're interested in online coaching, uh, diet and nutrition plans, definitely hit me up on my Instagram. 
um, feel free to drop a message if you want any more details. So thanks for having me on. Enjoy yeah, it. no problem. All right, I enjoyed it too. Good luck with your bodybuilding competition. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It goes ahead, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. All right, All right see you.